In this video, let's go ahead and learn about layers and caching when building images from our Docker file. So pretty much every one of these steps, so step one to five, they do create layers and a layer is used in caching. So how is this important to us? So what I'm going to do is pretty much open up terminal and right here, let's go ahead and install a few dependencies. npm install dash capital S. Let's go ahead and install react web pack. And then let's also go ahead and install gulp and grant. So basically I'm just installing random packages that you don't necessarily need. So this is only for demonstration purposes. So go ahead and press enter. And you can see that this will take a while. So it will download react webpack gulp and grunt. So just bear with me. And there we go. You can see that it added few packages and this took a while. So now let's go ahead and open up our code. And what I want to do here is open up index.js. And if I make this smaller, so you can see everything. So right here, let's simply go ahead and add another user. So let's call this Alice and then Alice at and then hotmail.com. Now let's go ahead and build an image from this. So go ahead and pretty much just uh, press up a couple of times. And what I'm going to do is uh, this one. So I need this command docker build dash T user service API and then latest and then dot. So you've learned about this. So now go ahead and press enter. And you can see that these are the steps and each step. So you can see that right here. So this step is using cache. So you can see that it's using the cache, right? So just give it a second and you can see that now this will take a lot longer because we are installing a bunch of dependencies and you can see that it's finished, right? So the point really here is that you can see that step one is pulling the node image. So latest and then work directory is using the cache, but really there is not much going on inside of this work directory. So this is simply saying create this folder if it doesn't exist, otherwise use it. And then we add the source code right here and then we run npm install. So if I run the application, so let's go ahead and run. So run just like that. Press enter and there is a container already. So let me go ahead and say docker rm and then dash f user dash API. There we go. That's gone. So if I run this again and then open up my web browser and if I refresh, you can see that we have two users right here. So we have Bob and Alice. Now let's go ahead and add a third user. So right here, let's go ahead and add Jake. Jake and then at and then yahoo.com. Save this. Now let's go ahead and build an image again with our changes. So go ahead and pretty much just say docker build. Basically the same command. Press enter. And you can see that it's running the same thing. So basically, from node right here using the cache, adding our source code right here and then running npm install. And you can see that took a while. So the thing here is that we can do way better than this. So we can take advantage of caching because the only thing that we have changed was the source code. So because the source code has changed, right? So let me go back to the Docker file that we built. So because this step has changed, Docker has to recompute every single step that comes after this. So 
The way to improve this and to make sure that we do not run npm install and download and install dependencies all over again, we can simply take advantage of caching. So let's go ahead and think how we might improve this Docker file. So we know that what we need from this Docker file is two things. We need the package.json and package-log.json. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the working directory. And now here I'm going to say add, and then I'm going to say package, and then star dot json. So basically, uh, I actually missed the dot right here. So we want to add package.json to the working directory, which is app. So basically, now we are adding the package.json, right? And what we're going to do is pretty much uh, run npm install. And then after that's complete, we're going to add the source code. So we're going to add everything from the current directory right here to our working directory inside of the container, which is app. And then we're going to run node and then index.js. So this will improve things dramatically because we don't often change what's inside of the package.json, surely at the beginning of development, but once the software is mature enough, we don't necessarily add too many dependencies. So we can simply use caching, right? And then Docker will know whether the contents of package.json or package-log.json changed and then recompute everything all over again. If not, it will just skip this step, use whatever it's been cached, and then pretty much just add the source code and then run node and then index.js. And this will be way much faster. So let's go ahead and give that a go. So let's go ahead and build. So let's go ahead and build this for the first time. So docker build minus t user API and then call them latest. And it says when using add with more than one source file, the destination must be a directory. So what I need to do is simply say forward slash and then dot and this should work. And I think I got mistakes. So this should be dot and then forward slash like that. And let's go ahead and give that one more try. So Docker build and there we go. So it's working now. So you can see that right here. So it's pulling the node image. It's using the cache for the working directory. And it's added the package and package dot or actually package dot json and then a package dash lock dot json and then right here it run an npm install right and this is done so right here so you can see that step five was simply adding the source code and then step six and then step six is the actual command so node index dot js so now let's go ahead and pretty much just add a fourth user so right here so let's go ahead and add maria and maria at yahoo dot and then com dot uk something like that and then let's go ahead and go back and now let's watch this closely so now if i build an image from this docker file guess what? So you can see that this was so, so much faster. And why? It was simply because of this step right here. So right here, you can see that it's using cache, which it wasn't before. And the same for the package and then start.json. So nothing has changed there. And in fact, you can see, so let me start from the top. So right here, using cache, so this is for the working directory, the same for adding package.json, the same for npm install right here. So this is awesome. And then the only thing that changed was the source code, which was inside of this step. And this is much better because now we are using caching 
and you can see that building images this way was much, much faster. So bear in mind when you create your Docker files to think exactly what will change and what will not and try and make use of caching whenever is possible. Now let's go ahead and test this by bringing up a container from this new image. So let me go ahead and check the images that I have. So Docker PS, let me clear that. And we have this user API. So let's go ahead and stop it. So Docker RM dash F. So we, went, so we want to stop and remove. And let's go ahead and simply say user API. Now let's go ahead and simply start user dash API like that. And this will be using the new image. So press enter. There we go. Now if I open up my web browser, and then right here, let's go ahead and refresh. You can see that it's working. We have Maria right here. So Maria was the last user that we added. And there we go. Now we have an understanding of Docker caching and layers. Go ahead and drop me a message if you have any questions. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this. In the meantime, I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.